All right, guys, touch quite back again today. I hope you're enjoying your day so far, and today we're going to talk about this new meta which is presenting itself here in Call of Duty Black Ops Card War. These last several days, we've seen some rule set updates earlier today with the M16 and the attack rifles all being banned, the AK-47 now jade out of the title, and it seems like the Krig and the AK-74U are now back in the meta as they were pretty much at the end of November before the Krig got nerfed. But the question mark is, how many AK-74Us, how many Krigs are we seeing on certain maps? Last night, we saw in scrims some three S SMG metas seem to be coming into play in certain situations, and that may have some significant impact here on how well these teams perform this upcoming season. Intrigued to hear your thoughts on which team this benefits, which team this doesn't benefit, in the comment section below, and let's hop into things then. Like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it, it really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that. Firstly, this from Clayster. Cannot wait to freely talk about what we have been working on, as the tat says, cannot believe it's fists only this season. I believe this is something to do with the GA stuff, I'm not exactly sure what this refers to. Oh, well, stay tuned for what this might potentially be because I believe this is CDL related and something may be coming out about this over the next week or so hopefully with the CDL kicking off relatively soon but as Envoy says yesterday Team Texas live in stereo versus Seattle and Wester so I watched some of these scrims against Seattle against Wester and on some of the maps Garrison Crossroads in particular they were using three SMGs right the Krig seems to be the go-to the main ARs almost certainly using the Krig right now I'm not really sure what happened to the XM4 because people were using the XM4 in the AK-47 meta but now the AK-47 has gone it almost seems like people aren't using the xm4 as much not really sure what's going on there but in certain situations there was three smgs coming out on the map right and that was really a concern this entire season that the meta would be super ar dominated the krig was so good the ak-47 was so good at the time the xm4 was at least viable the ffar was in the game and then we kind of had the ak-74u and the mp5 kind of trying to well struggling to find their spots in certain situations but now we're here we are a few months into the title and the smgs are becoming dominant once again on certain maps we're seeing three smgs on certain maps we're seeing too and the flex player kind of, kind of goes back and forth between the both there's no real flex weapon as of yet you'd imagine it would be the xm4 hasn't really come into play and i imagine things will change in the meta going forward as well but a number of pro teams using this three smg meta now with their third player on the ak-74u none of course has big impacts right because we're going to look at some of the teams in a second here some of them are designed in effect to well accommodate a three smg meta or at least uh, well they were designed with that in mind potentially that if it is a three smg meta at some point our team will be viable whereas other teams were certainly not hoping for this right and I think we can see this quite clearly with some of these constructions of the rosters and if that is the case going forwards what impact is that going to have which teams are going to rise to the top which teams are going to fall shy but Optic were certainly looking good in this meta yesterday Envoy and Scump obviously no problem using the 74U it's dashy where the question mark was last season on the Optic Gaming Los Angeles squad his um, MP5 was not exactly spectacular right especially in that early season meta where um, well Sasha talked about for a time that he believed dashy actually wanted to be a flex whereas Dashi believed he wanted to be a main assault rifle right and they were both kind of vying for that role Slasher of course ended up as the main AR and then Dashi was stuck on the MP5 in the early part of the season when it was pretty much a four MP5 meta one M4 at the time in that 5v5 situation and Dashi wasn't so good with the MP5 on that game but this game the AK-74U maybe it plays more traditionally to something like a Maddox you could argue right relatively low recall pretty much just vertical plays maybe quite similarly Dashi certainly looking very good with this weapon and other SMGs and kind of flex players probably in a similar position. Of course, we know Doug's been going off with it as of late, starting the map with a nice 10 kill streak versus Los Angeles Grillers. So, well, intrigued to see how these guys perform this weekend since his new squad for the Challengers Cup number three. But yeah, everyone's been using the 74U to great effect here. Doug, of course, being an SMG typically throughout his career, has been doing a solid job with it. But a lot of these teams, right, Dash, you wouldn't really have hoped or expected possibly that he's going to be on that role, right? You maybe would have hoped if you're an Optic Chicago fan for him to be on that second AR or something. That's typically where he's been. A main assault rifle throughout the majority of his career in part but it now seems like he may have to use this AK-74U to great effect if this team wants to do great because of course you're looking at some of the other top teams in the league you're looking at Atlanta phase you're looking at Dallas Empire these guys are perfectly built quite honestly to run in a three SMG meta if they have to. Optic Chicago was a bit of a question mark how well this might potentially work with Dashi on this uh, well on this third SMG role but as of yesterday it looks like he's accommodating to it very well indeed it may actually work out to Optic Chicago's benefit you could argue 
but to other teams, maybe that is certainly not the case. So as Gunner says yesterday, playing on a 4 LA host, playing on a 4 Dallas host, because Gunner's yet to move to Atlanta, I believe, for some better internet over the coming days. They didn't exactly have the best time in scrims against Optic Chicago. But in this scrim set, Optic were using three subs on certain maps, as Scooby Shuffle says, on Garrison and Crossroads. On certain maps, they might have been trying it, but it didn't really work out to great effect. And well, as first says, I'd love to see a third gun in the meta, but it's still pretty solid as is. I must say it is pretty dull to watch, just Crigton 74 use. But uh, yeah, maybe it'll get better to watch. Who really knows? It's certainly better, in my opinion, than M4 MP5. But uh, hopefully we get some weapon at some point. I mean, typically in track games, we get some weapons that become viable throughout the game. And well, I imagine that'll be the case this year if they don't just get gentlemen's agreement it, as tends to happen nowadays. But as Slasher says, it's hilarious how much everyone complained about GAs, especially sub-related, and maps only benefiting assault rifles, right? That was kind of the discussion. That because most of the players voting on the GAs tend to be assault rifle players, you maybe sometimes see GAs that are more benefiting assault rifles rather than SMGs. And that was maybe the discussion around the smokes at the time, like Abizi was kind of arguing, look, I need a smoke as an entry SMG to be able to kind of maneuver around and do well in that role, whereas the ARs were like, okay, we don't want smokes. And it, probably that's a fair decision, all things considered. But as Slasher says, look, all the teams now pretty much are experimenting with three SMGs on half the maps. What a surprise. So the GAs hardly actually do benefit assault rifles in the way that some people are arguing. And as he replies, I do actually prefer one AR, one flex, two subs, but that's just my opinion. But the community thought at the start of the season, let's argue, that there was going to be eight assault rifles on the map. That's clearly not the case right now. A lot of these teams may have been, uh, well, gearing up for an assault rifle meta, which hasn't really come to fruition. So, well, this was happening yesterday. Dashi destroyed Wester with new meta in this video right here. I'll leave this link down below. Maybe I'll play a couple of clips on screen for you guys right here. But yeah, Dashi certainly looking solid with the 74U, especially here on Garrison. Had a nice couple of kill cams with it. And I'm sure other flex players are in a similar position, given the 74U is very AR-like in a sense. Watch back mid. Last guy back mid. Yep. One shot low floating. Literally bullets him. They're back mid, Looney. And dead. I'm staying down. There's two back yeah, left. Two back left. Black bad. Black bad. Black bad. Yeah. 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 Plays. Yeah. Yo, the, the Mission last P3, the uh, if we have a guy push off front there, we need to send somebody in because, uh, like, whenever the hill pops, uh, one of them spawn and, like, back Like the corner, the yeah, loading or in. whatever. Yeah. Makes sense. We don't have to, like, really pull out vans that hard, but we just need the last person to fill out vans. Like, whenever, uh, especially if we have the front pushed out, just play like a rat. But if we look towards the rest of the rosters in the league, how do they match up in a three SMG meta in certain situations? A team like Atlanta Face shouldn't have any issues. Simper, BZ, Selium, they're going to have no problem at all. Dallas Empire, of course, they're going to have no problem. Probably, if anything, even improve. I mean, Ilya, I think, has been running the flex for them, so he can do whatever he wants, but certainly this team is going to be nasty, no matter what. Florida Mutineers are relatively interesting, right? You've got Slackton Awakening. I think Awakening will certainly do a solid job with the 74U if required. Royal Ravens are a very flexible team as well. Zero can use whatever in that role. So most of these teams, I think um, it works relatively well for, I think, a team like Los Angeles. These, for example, that's going to be okay. They don't really have too many, like, clear-cut SMG players on that squad. But in, like, a game like World War II, for example, Kenny was absolutely disgusting with the PPSH, even though typically throughout his career, he's actually preferred an assault rifle position. And, well, you could say that this 74U is actually very similar to the PPSH in a lot of its aspects, and therefore Kenny's probably going to be nasty with it and temp as well if they are required to use it. Some of the questions, I suppose, came around initially optically Chicago, possibly. I mean, Dashi looked very good as we just looked at right there, but there were some question marks around, okay, Dashi, if he is forced into an SMG role, how well is that going to look? Maybe they'd prefer him to kind of be um, the counterpart to formal on the main assault rifles, but again, not how it's going to go this season. It does seem, at least the current trajectory that we are on. One of the questions, again, I suppose, is around the rocker. I don't want to feel like I'm blasting the rocker, but uh, when this team was initially announced, a lot of people were saying, okay, maybe it's too slow. Like, um, in an assault rifle meta, this team would probably be absolutely fine and perfect, but in an SMG meta, Meta. Like, you've got to have attached Major Maniac and Priest all running the 74U. I'm just not sure that's going to be a, a trio that's going to compete super well with, well, some of the other trios that these teams are offering right now. So the Rocker, maybe a bit of a question mark right here. But most of these teams should probably be fine. Maybe there's a question about Seattle Surge as well, right? Given that Gunless maybe tends to prefer an assault rifle as well. If he's got to use a 74U and Octane's the only AR on the team, again, Gunless, Pristini, Looney is your kind of triple SMGs. Maybe that's not quite as powerful as what some of the other squads are bringing to the table. So 
certainly some of these teams, there's a bit of a question mark as to whether they're going to be able to perform in a 3 SMG meta. But uh, well, for now, Optic Chicago certainly looking solid, at least how they were scrimming last night. But uh, given that most of the teams don't stream their scrims, it's somewhat tough to tell how other teams are looking. Just to finish off the video with a couple of interesting points, Modern Warzone points this out yesterday. 99.9% .9 sure we figured out how to consistently avoid skill-based matchmaking and get bot lobbies in Warzone without having a low KD account involved, dropping this bomb soon. As Rated says, of course, a professional Warzone player, 400 Thieves, why would you tell everyone how to do it? Literally about to make what everyone is complaining about 100% worse because the select few are aware of it or whatever. Okay, then call out the people who are using it. And then he comes down and says, like, DM me the names of people who are using it. I will expose them myself. But uh, then they say they've DM'd him, but then Rated came out and says, like, they just DM'd him to say they're not really sure. But certainly this Warzone cheating situation we've had to discuss relatively recently is pretty frustrating to deal with. I believe that Warzone companion app or whatever Activision somehow nerfed it to some degree. So it's not quite as strong as it used to be, or at least in order to get these, in order to figure out how bad the lobbies are you are playing in and then just leave and get a new lobby. But maybe there's some sort of solution around the corner or some big names are going to get called out for actually abusing this type of stuff because, uh, well, competitive Call of Duty maybe is getting in a better and better state every single year. But competitive Warzone is very much up in the air, especially with, uh, well, how much some of these guys make and how much money is on the line for some of these tournaments as we've seen the last several weeks. Also thought this was pretty interesting right here. So Stefan Powell over at BBC Radio 1 was interviewing Vic Star right here about the, uh, well, the London Royal Ravens. And as he says, like, people were running, of course, he was running some co-streams at the Call of Duty matches last year. And I thought this was actually really, really interesting to see. As he was saying, there was a lot of people saying, oh my god, like, I didn't know that this existed. I didn't know the CDL existed. I didn't know people competed like this. And, um, yeah, this is so cool. And, uh, well, hopefully Vic Star actually getting some people involved in the scene. Right? I thought this was pretty cool to see. I didn't know they had events like this. And, uh, well, as he says, just goes to show that there's a lot of people that gaming touches that have no idea about the CDL, right? And if uh, but, but people like Vic Star and influencers like this can get these guys involved more in competitive Call of Duty, that's certainly a win for all of us, right? And the CDL certainly seems to be going down the right line. We're partnering with some of these players and maybe they could do more so in the future. But intrigued to hear your thoughts and all the stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. Really helps out the YouTube algorithm to know you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well and help grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you for watching as always. Take care and I will see you next time.